that are viewing um, through YouTube and yes, Facebook. Lord. And yes, good morning to all of you that made your way Amen. here. Yeah. God is good. How many believe that? Yeah. He's awesome. Before we get started, I just have a quick little testimony that I want to tell. You know, some of us, we get a little burdened down with different things, with sickness, with health, and I've been going through that a little late, lately, here lately, and I know you all have seen some of the weight that's falling off me, but to God be the glory. Yeah. And I just want to say to you that I don't receive anything that the devil is trying to give me, but I give God the glory for everything that he's doing through me. And I just want you all to know that we have a powerful pastor, a powerful man of God. He came over to the house, him and the first lady, and him and, and my husband and the first lady stood over me and they prayed. And when I tell you the Holy Spirit came up in this came through there to the point where I couldn't even lift my head. And I just want you all to be encouraged. No matter what you're going through, no matter what sickness that Satan tells you that you have, you praise God anyway. Amen. Give God the glory. Because it's a win-win situation, no matter what it is. Hallelujah. So I just stop by to tell you that if you, just like the woman that came to the well, she came with nothing. Heavy laden, heavy burden, nothing for nothing. But when she got to the well, she met Jesus. So anytime you're going through something, pick up your word of God and meet Jesus. Because I, get, I guarantee you that he'll fill you with everything that you need. So I just want you to know that I'm here to praise God this morning. And I want Bethlehem to praise God for whatever it is that you're going through. Just drop it. Let it go. Take your mind off of it. Because you can't do that anyway. Your arms too short to box. So let God fight your battle. Let him be there for you. Now that we got that all out, let's praise his name. Come on, give God one more hand. Come on, praise him. Praise him. He's worthy. Glory. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. A word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, forgive us for all of our sins. Lord, for those that we have done that we didn't know that we would do. Forgive us things for things that we probably going to do, God. Lord, I just thank you for allowing us to see another day. Somebody didn't make it this morning, God, but you allowed us to be here today. And Lord, I just ask you to just let your Holy Spirit come in this place and take over. God, just be in this place. Come to the man of God, Lord, and give him a word that will just bless us all, God. Help us to understand it, Lord. Help us to use it, God. And Lord, I just ask you to just use him. Use everybody, Lord. The musicians, the deacons, when they yeah, do the devotion. Yeah, yeah. Lord, just use us all, God. Yeah, yeah. Because without you, we're nothing, Lord. And we just thank you this morning. We thank you for everything that you've done. Everything that you're going to do. And everything that you're doing right now, God. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, God.
Yeah. We pray to God all the time. All right now. But we got to praise him all the time. Amen. There's plenty of room for a lot of praise in there. Amen. Sometimes, you know, I was on the way to church this morning and I was driving alone and just coming down covering the pike up there by where that Raleigh, you know, couple of uh, elementary school is up there. And you know, confirmation can come from all kinds of places. Yeah. For the last, how many sermons now? Eight or nine you've been preaching? Nine. Nine. And I'm riding by this neon sign up there. It's got three, three words on it. And it was exactly what you've been praying. Without Pray without ceasing. Yeah. And I looked up at you know, sometimes you don't even pay no attention to you, Sam. You're yeah. riding the Bible, you don't even look over there. Yeah. And I looked over there and it said, pray without ceasing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you know, that's a good confirmation yeah. for, for what's been going on right in here. Yeah. That we pray without ceasing. It's yeah. other people getting the same word. God has got a way to get this word to yeah. all yeah. kinds of his children. Yeah. Yeah. And we preach, I appreciate you for, for what you have been doing about us coming in here saying pray without ceasing. But that was my confirmation today, and I wanted all of us to know it's, it's, it's out there for us. Yeah. God is really a good God. Yeah. Uh, if you would, those who want to go along with me, we're coming out of Psalms. Eighth chapter, first verse, Psalms. And it says, O Lord our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sufferings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider the heavens, when I consider the heavens, the works of thy fingers, the moon, the stars, which thou hast ordained. What is man? That thou art mindful of him, and the son of man, that thou visitest him. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou hast made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep, the oxen, yea, and the all the beasts of the field, the fowls of the air, and the fish of the ocean, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. God is, who are we? My gosh, it, it just, that, that God takes the time out to think about us, my Lord, my Lord. to consider us, to consider us individually, not just us yes. as a whole, but us individually. Yes. I'm going to attempt to sing this song for you all. Y'all come in with me. It's going to be leaning on God's, leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. First couple of verses and the refrain. What a fellowship, what a
get a little weak, Lord God, when our legs tremble from time, Lord. Lord God, when we can't hold ourselves up, Lord God, that you gave us those everlasting arms to lean on, Lord. You, you got, you're looking after us, Lord God, sometimes when we don't even know, Lord God. We don't even think, but you always got us in your arms, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for that protection, Lord God. I thank you for the confidence that you sent, Lord God, down here. Yeah. Lord God, all the things you came up and down here, Lord God, you, and you died a horrible death for us, Lord God. But Lord, you, you gave us your, your comfort, Lord God, and you blessed us, Lord God, to be able to stand before God one day, Lord God, not because of what we have done, Lord God, certainly not because we were good, Lord, but because you died up there on the cross for us, and you made us where we can, we can look at God and say, Lord, I am, I, I, it's okay for me to be here because he did this for me. Yeah. I thank you, Lord God. Oh, my Lord, I thank you for all your blessings, Lord God, for this church, Lord God. Everybody that's in here today that came from our homes, yeah. that rode in our vehicles, Lord God, for you putting the raiment on our bodies today, Lord God. Yeah. Lord God, you provided us with food. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for all your blessings, Lord. Yeah. There are so many, Lord God, that would be so happy to be here this morning, Lord. Hospitals. I ain't taking no vacation, Lord. Not just from COVID, but from it's all kinds of things going on, Lord. All people need, they need to have their voices and their minds and their hearts on you, Lord God. Wherever they are, Lord God, in the hospitals, in the prisons, Lord God, in the place, Lord God, that someone's calling on your name, Lord. I know you hears, Lord. I know you hears, Lord God. And I know you will come for us, Lord God, and comfort us and guide us and lead us. I just thank you, Lord. I just thank you, Lord God, because I know what I have done is not worthy to be up here even just calling on your name. But I thank you, Lord, that you made me okay. You gave me. It's okay. You justified me, Lord God. I'm justified because of what you did. We all are. And I thank you, Lord. I want everybody in here, Lord God, just to remember this as I go sit to my seat, Lord God. God died just for you, yes. just for you, just for me individually. Yes. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
We need you in our homes. We need you in our community. We need you in our city. And we need you in our nation. We ask now as I stand to deliver your word that I preach the heart of God. Help me to rightly divide your word that the end result some won't be edified, glorified, and the enemy be terrified. Now God, hide me behind the cross that no flesh glory in your sight. I commit this over to you have your way as long as you can. This is my prayer. In your darling son, Jesus' name, amen. amen. Come on, put your hands together and give our God a hand of praise. Now do it again for yourselves. look out and peruse to the congregation. You are such a lovely crowd today. Amen. Amen. I am excited about what the Lord has been doing through these series of teaching and preaching on the power of prayer. Uh, today will mark part 10 of a 10 part series on just a little talk with Jesus. And it's my prayer that you have been blessed and edified and even reveal something to you about the power of prayer that you didn't know at first. Amen. So I invite your attention again to 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. When you have it, if you're able to stand, could you stand in honor of the word? And it's very simple. And you probably know it by memory right now after 10 weeks and it simply says pray without ceasing you can take your seats pray without ceasing if you can worry without ceasing then you very well can pray without ceasing. Worry is a cancer that eats away at the fabric of your faith. Worry says to God, I don't know if you can handle this situation. I don't know if you can work this situation out or not. An interesting quote from Christian today. Worry is a conversation you have with yourself about the things you cannot change. But prayer is a conversation you have with God about the things he can change. And I know that sometimes it seems like life gives you more than you can stand. And when life gives you more than you can stand, that's when you kneel. You are only as strong as your prayer life. I'm convinced that the reason why some believers are so fragile and easily offended it's because they have not tapped into the discipline of prayer. Church folk falling out with one another. Family members 
not speaking to each other over oh, some stuff that happened 50 years ago. And you the first one here on Sunday morning. But you're harboring hate and unforgiveness in your heart. Let me give you a newsflash. God don't work like that. If you don't forgive others, then he won't forgive you. That's Matthew 6, verse 14 and 15. And you're wondering why you're praying bounce back prayers. What's bounce back prayer, preacher? Uh, when you pray and your prayer go to the ceiling and bounce back at you. It's because God ain't hearing them because of that mess in your heart. I felt the tugging right there. But let me talk about what I'm supposed to talk about. Prayer is not confined by geography. What do you mean, C.D. Milton? God is everywhere. You, you don't have to be in a place called church to pray. You can pray any and everywhere. I, I remember back in the year 2000, that's been 22 years ago, and I was working for FedEx, and FedEx had a benefit in the package that you can fly anywhere in the world for free. Just get on one of their planes. And so I decided to fly to Germany to visit my brother. And as I boarded the flight in Memphis at the FedEx hub, I flew to Newark, New Jersey, and I stayed the night in Newark. And then from there, they flew us to England, all across the Atlantic Ocean. And it was a huge plane full of cargo and about three or four pilots and the lonesome me. <laughs> but they had in the, in, the, in the back of the plane, they had four beds. And so as the pilots were flying across the Atlantic Ocean, I was lying in one of the beds, looking up into the ceiling, how many know I wasn't sleeping? <laughs> but I was busy praying and talking to God. I'm reminded of what Pastor Steve Young said. He said, when he boarded the plane, he said, God, bless the pilot to get to where he's going to. And if the pilot gets to where he's going, then I know I'm in good hands. So I began to pray and talk to God all the way across the Atlantic Ocean to England, to France, and then to Germany. But it was the same God in Germany that was in Melanchthon. The same God that had me board the plane in Memphis was the same God when I touched my feet down on German soil. He was the same God. So I could pray and talk to God because God is not confined by geography. Y'all don't know what it's about. Prayer is not confined by geography. You can pray everywhere. And so Paul tells us to pray without ceasing. And at the risk of sounding redundant, Paul didn't mean for us to pray without a break. But Paul meant to keep our petition before the throne of God because God knows how to condition us in the discipline of prayer. Amen. And so prayer is not confined by geography. Help me preach about the neighbor. Amen. Prayer, prayer is not confined, not confined. by geography. Amen. Now give the Lord a hand of praise. Prayer will work anywhere. And so prayer since it's not confined by geography, my first point is prayer will work at your house. Yes, Man, yes, you are the head of your household. Right. And, and some of you mothers that don't have a man in the home, 
and you've been doing it all by yourself, you need to set a standard for prayer in your home. Everything shouldn't go on in your home. You, you should have a godly home, a place where the Lord is welcome. And what we need in America is some folk that have the mandate like Joshua in Joshua 24 and 15 which says, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which, are, which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. And here it is. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Don't matter about the Smiths. Don't matter about the Joneses. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the militants have made a declaration that as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I'm not looking over my neighbor's backyard to see what my neighbor got. My neighbor don't really matter to me. I decree and declare that my house shall be a haven for the Lord Jesus Christ and he's welcome in my home. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Prayer will work at your house. Anybody feel like I feel? I'm trying to look for some believers. I'm, 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 I'm fishing for, I'm looking for some believers that will stand to the occasion and say, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Yes, sir. I know it might not by myself, but I know some more of you in here that feel like I feel. Yes, sir. You've been trying everything under the sun, yes. but you come to the conclusion that prayer works yes, and you're going to serve the Lord in your house. And so number one, prayer will work in your house. Then number two, prayer will work in the schoolhouse. It's, it's no wonder why our schools have become execution chambers. We kick God out of our schools on a national level. So God says, okay, y'all don't want me to come in the schools, have it your way. Because I won't barge in, y'all can have your way. But you'll forfeit my protection, my promises, and my peace. You don't want me in the halls of academia? That's okay. I'm still able. I, I'm not coming while I'm not wanted. But I guarantee you, if we had a national mandate on prayer in schools, we could turn our young people around. But it starts with prayer. And so when we have a national mandate on prayer in our schools that say we can pray when we want to, you invite the power and the presence and the peace of God into our schools on a national level. And I know we may not, they might let us pray in school, but it's some folk praying in school. Help somebody. It's some students praying in school. All them hard tests and exams, believe me, somebody's praying at school, but it's not on a national mandate because we have kicked God out of all schools. Don't long gone on the day when we come and have prayer across the intercom when school started, but that kept the enemy at bay. When you invite God into what you're doing and you honor God by prayer, God is obligated to show up and show out on your behalf. So prayer will work at the schoolhouse. Then number three, prayer will work at the jailhouse. Because God is not confined by geography. He, he can get into the jail cell 
he can get behind the glass yes, sir. when inmates start to pray. Yeah. And we can't just keep locking up all young black men and throwing away the key. Yeah. They need to be transformed by the power of prayer and the power of God. Yeah. That, that's, that's what the penitentiary is supposed to be. Where the guilty can come and work out their penitence before God and society. Amen. But unfortunately, it's turned into a money-making racket. And I know that some deserve to be there. We can't, keep lead, can't just keep leaving repeat offenders on the street when they're terrorized and they've been a menace to society. They need to be locked up. But prayer will work behind prison bars. Help somebody. You, you can't kick God out of the jailhouse. If you call on him, he'll come behind the bars and get behind the glass and he'll work it out for those that are incarcerated. I'm reminded of Paul and Silas in Acts 16. When Paul and Silas went to Philippi, it was a young woman who was a soothsayer. She kept following Paul and Silas talking about these be men of God who have come to show us the way of salvation kept on saying it over and over again and Paul got tired of it so he cast the devil on this girl and her masters, her bosses got upset and trumped up some charges against Paul and Silas had them whipped and beat and threw them in jail but they were in jail but somebody know at midnight after they prayed and sang praises to God God got so moved until he sent an earthquake to rock the foundation of the prison and they were changed with loose and they were set free. And the God that was keeping Paul and Silas started to do himself for harm by killing himself because he knew that the same fate that those prisoners escaped, his life was on the line. So Paul observed him and said, look, do yourself no harm. We're all here. And the jailer said, what must I do to be saved? And Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Prayer will work at the jailhouse. Y'all don't believe it. Acts 12. When James, when Herod had killed James with the sword, and he apprehended Peter and put Peter in prison, but the church were praying without ceasing for Peter. And the Bible said that they didn't go to kill him. Peter has two, in, two guards chained to him. And two guards at the jail, no house of the prison. It was 14, there were 14 policemen that were watching Peter around the clock. But the church was praying to God without ceasing. And that's all I'm trying to get you to see. We need to pray without ceasing. And so if the church prayed without ceasing, the Lord sent an angel and a bright light shined in the prison. Peter's chains just fell off. The angel told him, put your clothes on, put your shoes on and follow me. And so as the, as the angel led Peter out of prison, he got to the gate. Peter thought he was in a vision. But he started to think about this thing. He said, I'm out of prison. My chains are gone. This got to be God. Loosen me from this prison and from Harry and from the expectation of the Jews. And so Peter went to John Mark's mother house and started knocking on the door. A little damsel named Rhoda came to the door. Whoa, it's Peter. And she would open the door, but she ran back to the house. Oh, y'all, Peter's here, Peter's here. I said, you done gone mad, woman. That's his angel. That's not Peter. But Peter kept on knocking. And they got to see Peter. They all were astonished at the power of God because they kept on praying without ceasing. And somebody knows today, whatever you're going through that's too hard for you, you need to pray without ceasing. Keep that petition before the throne of God and God will show up and he'll show out. Because prayer 
is not confined by geography. And so you can pray anywhere. You can pray everywhere. And that's good news for somebody that's locked up. You may have a son or daughter locked up. Keep on praying. God will show up and God will show out. But prayer is not confined by geography. Number four, prayer will work at the White House. Second, First Timothy 2 and 5 said that we should pray for those in authority. Pray for kings that they may live a quiet and a peaceable life. Yes, sir. Our president uh -huh. and his cabinet need prayer. Yes, sir. We need to be praying for President Joe Biden yes, sir. to make some wise decisions for the glory of God yes. and for the good of the country. Amen. Because this country is in shambles. Yes, sir. yes I'm pro-life. We can't just keep on killing these innocent babies and expect God to be A-OK -okay with it. Because Jeremiah 1.5 said, Before I formed in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee to be a prophet unto the nation. That's the life inside the womb. And let me just say this, if you're crying that you're pro-life, be pro-life all the way. Don't, don't be a hypocrite. Be a pro, be pro-life from the womb to the tomb. Put some laws in place on all these assault weapons and gun violence. These mass shootings are innocent lives as well. God is concerned about all life. I say God yeah, is concerned about all life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Washington D.C. has a lot to give an answer to God for. Yeah, but the prayer will work at the White House. Yeah. And lastly, and I'll take my seat, prayer will work at the church house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask, ask yourself the question. Out of all the time I've spent talking about my church, how much time do you spend praying for your church? Yes, sir. If you sound real off on the rock or just keep talking about your church, but you're still here, yes, let me help you. There's no perfect church. Amen. As long as there are people in the church, it's an imperfect church. Yes, so you can stop looking for a perfect church. As long as people in the church, the church is never going to be perfect. Pray for your church. Because we're living in some choppy times. And the church needs prayer. The body of Christ needs prayer. The local church needs prayer. Prayer is not confined by geography. And what we really need is less people talking and more people praying. Let me say it again. I said what we really need is less people talking and more people praying. Because prayer works at your house, prayer works at the schoolhouse, prayer works at the jailhouse, prayer works at the White House, and the power of prayer works at the church house. Right. Jesus, he modeled prayer for us. The night before he went to the cross, he was in the garden of Gethsemane praying, and he was praying so hard to sweat was rolling down like great drops of blood. And he was said, Father, if there's any other way, let this cup pass for me. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. And I'll save you. Our elder brother, 
our Lord went to the cross, gave his life for the sins of the whole world. He died, but it did stay dead. Three days that he got up from the grave with all power in his hand. Anybody know he got power? I said, anybody know he got power? You all stop like that, he got power. And he's listening to our prayers. Prayer is not confined by geography. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Changes things. And if you're looking for a witness, prayer got me here. Prayer got all y'all here. You might not know it, but somebody was praying for you. And the God they was praying to heard their prayer and came to see about you. You might have been going another way and everything. But God was still watching over you. And if you're in this place today, you're in here because God has sent you here. Nothing happened by accident with God. This is, you're going to make it. Nothing. If you're in this place today, God has sent you here to hear this word about prayer. And we don't want to cut corners. We don't want to try to build nothing up. It's just God doing what he do. We can't change that. So if you're in this place and you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can do that now. The doors of the church is open. They stay open. You can go at any time. But best you're here in this building, God will give you an opportunity to come here. So I would come today. Because prayer changes things. It might not seem like it's working, but God is always working behind the scenes. And it's working for you. You might be in here looking for a church home. Everybody need a pastor. God said, I said, pass up your own heart. Somebody to teach you how to pray and what to pray. From. I remember when I first came to Christ, they was having a prayer service. And it came around to me. And I said, Lord, I don't know what to say. And everybody just kept on going. But he said, stay there. I teach you what to say. I'm here because somebody God told me how to pray. He'll teach you how to pray. Don't let a tragedy come in your life. You call on the men. Don't wait till they get tragedy. You call on the men. And you don't have to wait till you get the wild subject to go to the bottom. You can start the day. If you watch us online, you can do the same thing. You can accept Jesus Christ right where you are. Paul said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised them from the dead, they shall be saved. You say that from your heart. God is able to touch you. Somebody's been praying for you. That's why you're listening. Somebody's been praying for you. If you accept Jesus Christ in your same as you can find a good church. Put yourself on a pastor. But you may learn. All of us have to start somewhere. And the best place to start is with Jesus Christ. Come join us today. We have got to have you. We would love to have you. Got a pastor teaching the word of God. Teaching the word of God. And living the word of God. That's the hard part. You got to live it. Where we see there's none, but there is room at the cross. Amen. Yes. I want to see about Pastor Andrew for that great teaching. Ten weeks. Ten weeks of the same stuff. Ten weeks of the same stuff. And we 
we ain't got it by now. We just struggle. We need to be praying for all the young. The world, we can see the world going another way. And believe me, the world do not understand anything you're talking about. They don't understand it. They can't see it. But they're in it. So come out the world and take a good look back. And you'll see why you've been teaching on 10 weeks of prayer. Because the world needs prayer. Amen. Amen. Pastor, God bless you. Stay strong in the Lord, man. And all you brothers, God bless you. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a proud papa. On this coming Saturday, my son and his fiance, Tierra, will be coming to a strange wedding vow. Come on, give the Lord a praise. sister the other day, she says she can't wait to the wedding because she won't look at my facial expressions <laughs> and see what I'm, how am I, am I going to cry or what? Yeah. I'm going to try to be a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We thank God for them all they're going to. This chain of Bibles is coming Saturday on the 23rd and I just pray that you pray for them, pray for us, that the Lord will get his purpose across in their lives yeah. and in their marriage. Amen. And then on July 30th, uh, right here at our Bethlehem facility, Sean Teasy of Hot 107 and Kamitra Wilburn of News Channel 3 and Brooks Handyman Service will be giving away 300 backpacks filled with paper, pencils, hand sanitizer, folders, crayons for our school children. So that's an awesome, that's awesome. So this is going to be on a first come, first serve basis. But it's 300 backpacks that they're giving away on Saturday, July 30th, from 12 p.m. until 3 p.m. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. It's offering time. If you have your gift prepared, set aside something as you came before the Lord today to lift those gifts toward heaven and with bowed heads Father we thank you for these gifts as we obey your word we know you're going to be faithful to your word and open the one of the heaven for us and pour us out a blessing that there won't be room to receive we stand on the authority of your word and we we believe you for a harvest even now. Bless this gift as well as the giver. Let it be used for the advancement of your kingdom. And we give you all the praise, honor, and the glory. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you're a bigger than us today, let us see you by just lifting your hand, all visitors. Amen. Come on, so from Bethlehem, God. We thank God for your presence in this place, and we are honored to have you today because there are so many churches in Shelby County, but you were obedient to God and were led to Bethlehem. And so we salute you, give God praise for you, and come again. Amen. Amen. Those watching my Facebook and YouTube, we salute you as well. Thank God for you. Let's go home. Come on, stand to your feet. I want to say so bad, catch somebody by the hand, but don't, don't catch somebody by the hand. <laughs> you can know the elbow for them, but don't catch them by the hand. With bowed heads. And now may the grace of God, the love of the Son, Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you wherever you go, both now, henceforth, and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Go in peace. Amen.